Hi guys, so let's pick up right where we left off in the last video where we examined how the innate immune cells recognize foreign antigen and then the subsequent secretion of chemokines by our macrophages once they've detected an intruder. So now let's further add another layer to the picture and begin exploring what happens once the phagocyte detects a microbe or a cell that is expressing a foreign antigen and then how it comes to deal with terminating that foreign invader in the process of phagocytosis. Which in itself is really quite fascinating when you remember, really realise how diverse and highly adaptive and specialised all the cells in our body really are. Especially when you consider that there are billions and billions of these cells in our body working together in harmony. Now, the steps of phagocytosis are particularly important to know because, as we'll see later on, defects in the process of intracellular killing after phagocytosis can leave hosts particularly susceptible to severe and persistent infections, as in the case of chronic granulomatous disease. So, we have our phagocytic cell. For example, in this case, we'll take the macrophage, which is standing guard. It's assisting our innate immune defences by using its pathogen recognition receptors to detect the foreign antigen of, bac of bacteria. So what happens after it detects a foreign antigen? Well, a number of things. One, as we saw in the previous video, the macrophage becomes activated and begins to secrete chemokines and your acute phase proteins, such as your interleukins and tumor necrosis factor which not only activate the rest of our immune cells, both innate and adaptive immune cells, they also have effects on the body as a whole. For example, affecting the endothelium as well as causing fever, and therefore generally making the body's environment more hostile to invaders. And if you look further into it, you'll realise that these, these chemokines have a huge number of effects on the body when you look at your interleukins as well as your tumor necrosis factor, etc, etc. So next, let's see how our phagocyte phagocytoses the bacteria and then digests it with enzymes intracellularly. Now the first step in phagocytosis is the extension of pseudopodia, which extend from the phagocyte to wrap around and engulf the bacteria. Then these pseudopodia, they fuse together to, dra to trap the bacteria inside the phagocyte in what's called a phagosome. Now in this case, our macrophage, which remember has lots of digestive enzymes contained within lysozymes, as do our other phagocytes. Now these lysozymes go on and fuse with the trapped bacteria in the phagosome. So our lysozyme, so our lysosome fuses with our phagosome to form a phagolysosome. And this exposes the bacteria to the enzymes contained within the lysosome. And then subsequently causes digestion of the bacteria and the microbes using the enzymes. Now, this intracellular killing within the macrophages, or phagocytes, happens by two different methods. The first method is by oxygen-independent killing. And this form of killing, as the name states, doesn't require oxygen and is performed by enzymes such as lysozyme which remember the function of lysozyme is to, di to digest bacterial cell walls by cleaving peptidoglycans. Then you also have your defensins which form pores through bacterial cell membranes and then stuff like lactoferrin which chelates the iron in the bacteria and then some other various hydrolytic enzymes. But the main thing to remember here with these enzymes is that their method of killing are carried out without oxygen. And these are grouped collectively as your oxygen-independent killing mechanisms, which are your lysozyme, your lactoferrin, your defensins, and your hydrolytic enzymes. Now there's also another mechanism of intracellular killing, which is the more important one. But this method does require oxygen and is thus oxygen dependent and it's also referred to as what's known as the respiratory burst. Now this category of oxygen dependent killing further defines 
into two different killing methods, with both of them being centered around the generation of oxygen-free radicals. And the first of our oxygen-dependent killing mechanisms is by an enzyme, which is NADPH oxidase. And the function of this enzyme, NADPH oxidase, is that it reduces oxygen into your superoxide ion, super, superoxide anion, which then generates hydroxyl radicals, and hydrogen peroxide, which are both toxic and deadly to microbes. So it basically generates uh, lots of oxygen-free radicals to kill the bacteria. The second oxygen-dependent method is by another enzyme, myeloperoxidase, which combines chloride ions with some of the hydrogen peroxide formed by NADPH oxidase to produce hypochlorite, which interestingly enough is actually the same active ingredient that you'll find in a bottle of household bleach under your sink. So there are various um, intracellular killing methods that happen after phagocytosis, but the main thing really to remember is that they divide into oxygen dependent and oxygen independent killing mechanisms. And the more important one, as we said, requires oxygen, your oxygen dependent killing method, the respiratory burst, which is quick and effective. So therefore defects in the oxygen dependent killing within phagocytes actually has an important clinical correlation. And that is in the development of chronic granular matter disease, where patients suffer from chronic, severe and persistent bacterial and fungal infections specifically from catalase positive organisms and this is due to an inherited deficiency or defect in NADPH oxidase. So basically your phagocyte struggles to produce the oxygen free radicals which are needed to destroy these organisms and remember it's catalase positive organisms. So you may be wondering why is it only catalase positive organisms and not catalase negative? Well, the function of catalase is to break down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So if you have this organism or this bacteria that has the catalase enzyme, it's breaking down whatever little hydrogen peroxide that is available into water and oxygen. This prevents this hydrogen peroxide from being used by myeloperoxidase, which remember we said forms hypochlorite ions, bleach, to destroy these organisms. Okay, so so far we've examined antigen detection, we've also looked at phagocytosis, but there's another key feature to examine, and that is antigen presentation, and that's what we'll be having a look at in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.